Hello and welcome to the 8th lecture on earthquake resistant design of structures. In this lecture we would be talking about an example that would show how to design the beam structures, beam elements for earthquake resistance. In the previous lecture we talked about the ductile design detailings that are adopted in design for RC columns and beams and we also talked about the ductile design detailings that are adopted in the connections. Next, we also talked about the special confining reinforcement that is used and is provided such that the ductile detailing is provided in the plastic hinge zone for both columns as well as beam elements. Third, we talked about the reinforcement that is provided in the splice portion of the columns and the beams and the length of the splice portion was also discussed as per the ductile de design requirements given in IS13920 in the Indian Standard Code for columns and beams. Next, we discussed about the reinforcement patterns in other zones and the type of the anchorage which are used in the end zones for joints or column beam connections and also for uh, in the footings. In this lecture, we would be discussing about an example that is meant to uh, illustrate the ductile detailing of beams in RC columns. We have already discussed about the ductile designing requirements for beam elements, and especially in the splicing zone and the special confining reinforcement and the end anchorage for the beams. Now, in the previous lectures, in the lecture 4, if we recall uh, there was an example of a frame section which was subjected to earthquake loads and it was um, thereafter analyzed for various uh, shear forces, base shear forces and lateral forces at various levels. This was the, uh, this was the plan of the frame and this is the elevation of the frame now it's a four story building frame and it has got at least six bays each bay is 5000 mm in the x direction and 4000 mm in the y direction the elevation is such that each story is 3.15 meters in height next what we see is that we had already discussed this in lecture 4 that we determined the lateral load distribution through a lengthy process and these were the values obtained in the x direction for earthquake forces at various story levels and these were the forces that were obtained in the y direction at various story levels now in the illustrative figure this is the x direction the earthquake forces at various story levels are at story number 4 it is 254.56 at story number 3 it's 162.28 at story number 2 it's 72.126 story 1 is 18.031 similarly in the y direction these are the lateral forces that were obtained at the various story levels now in a question uh, arises if the grade of the concrete is given to us it's M20 the grade of the steel is Fe415 the live load on the floors is 3 kN per meter square and this is taken around 50% for the earthquake loads and the roof finish is 1 kN per meter square floor finish is 1 kN per meter square there may be brick walls on peripheral beams 230 mm thick brick walls on internal beams each 150 mm thick the density of the concrete is 25 kilonewton per meter cube and the density of the brick wall including plaster is 20 kilonewton per meter cube now in this question we would be uh, neglecting the brick wall and the uh, plaster loads on the structure now there are various load combinations that we can use these are illustrated in IS456 in the Indian standard code here the load combinations that are between dead load live load and earthquake loads 
are these the first uh, is 1.5 times dead load plus 1.5 times live load but once the earthquake loads come into the picture the most common ones and the most uh, um, are 1.2 times dead load plus 0.5 or 0.25 times live load minus or plus earthquake load in x direction and similarly in y direction similarly there are other uh, load combinations that could be applied onto the structural element in order to determine the moments and the shear forces now for the structure that we have here and this is the frame and um, we know that this it has got a bay area la, bay plan area like uh, this therefore the first thing to be done is that we have to obtain the vertical loads onto the bay area the total loads on beam ab bc and cd here which is located uh, somewhere here ab bc cd is such that the area of it's taken from the trapezoidal loading the area of each trapezoid for these beams would be 2 uh, plus 5 by 2 into 1 from the area of the trapezoid formula similarly the area of the true two trapezoids one this and somewhere other here which is acting on any of these beams cd bc or ab would be 7 square meters so the total live load would be what's the live load that's given to us it it is 3 kilonewton per meter square so the total live load would be 4 kilonewton per meter square and the dead load would be for example if it's a 200 mm slab above it uh, and we are neglecting the dead load of the beam itself uh, would be 25 into 0.2 which is 5 kilonewton per meter square so we have uh, it's assumed or neglected certain things uh, like the weight of the uh, wall above it so the total load on these beams individually this is individually is 1.2 times dead load plus 0.5 times live load plus earthquake load now uh, I believe it's 1.2 times earthquake load so it's 8 times kilonewton per meter square now the earthquake load is neglected first so the total lo unit load would be 8 into 7 divided by 5 it's 11.2 kilonewton per meter so what you could do is that uh, there might be a certain error here it's 1.2 times earthquake load so you could revise this thereafter uh, I have used a certain software uh, which uh, in which I have modeled the frame and I have applied all the dead load which is 11.2 kilonewton per meter onto the structure structural frame uh, particularly on the beams plus then I have applied the X direction loading which is 254.6 162.3 72.1 and 18 kilonewton at various story levels onto the frame now next I analyze this once I begin to analyze this first I get the reactions and these are the reactions these are the H reactions at the fixed supports below these are the vertical reactions at the supports below and these are the moments once I obtain the reactions then I start to obtain the moments these are the moments that are obtained for the frame now one could observe that the uh, moments uh, that are obtained are maximum in the lower beams and lesser towards the top of the uh, upper beams thereafter what we also observe is that certain beams uh, like uh, here this one in the middle section has got greater moment next what we have is that the a b c and d are is the beam 
that we are talking about and which one is this this is this one a b c and d and i have highlighted this these are the moments and the moment for bc beam is 220.98 the shear forces that are obtained are these now from these shear forces one can obtain one can see is that the shear forces increase towards the bottom of the uh, frame so ab bc and cd are the beams that we are taking into account and the shear forces that are obtained in these beams are given here now once we have obtained the moments and the shear forces next we move into the design